Hello, everyone. guys. This is the uh, uh, Dears from the uh, third team. And our project is uh, e-commerce recommendation engine. And we have teammates, me, Charlie, and Charles, James, and Song Yan. OK, our agenda is to first quickly recap the background of our project and then introduce you our tech stack and, and then our, archi uh, and our architecture diagram. And, uh, each component of this architecture will be explained by one of us and then our next step and FAQ for all of you. So uh, the background, I think because we've just mentioned it, we are going to build e-commerce recommendation engine to solve the non-effective upselling marketing activities campaigns from our team. So I think I will uh, skip this background and uh, just go to the tech stack of our team. So I divide our team's tech stack into three components. One is the AWS service that help us to build this whole pipeline, and then the language we've used, and then the project management tools. For the language, I would want to specify that our team is a very uh, code heavy team so that we use Python script and PySpark, especially for uh, Glue ETL jobs. And we also use Bash to control the uh, command line of AWS and also the uh, lifecycle config of our modeling uh, service. So let's come to the architecture of our team. Uh, our team, we have two branch. The main branch is today's focus. You can see it is the below bar. We divide the main branch into uh, five components. The first is the data storage, data ingestion, and then we will come to the data replica and the recovery plan. And then the third part is ETL part. The fourth part is modeling part. And the fifth part is data serving part. And in the upper half, we have we have another extensive branch that we do CDC for business intelligence demands. You can see that in this branch, our final data will went to Tableau server that will be used by our marketing team. So let me introduce you the first part of our main branch, that is the data storage and data replica part. So our data for from mobile applications and the web app applications will be ingested into Aurora, uh, Aurora RDS writer instance. To before we load, because our data actually are, are five local CSVs from the tutor from this project. So before we load them into this writer instance, we've created, we've experimented intensive performance tests on how to partition our data to make it uh, perform the analysis queries more effectively. So considering the large scale of our data and the requirement of pretty high uh, writing speed, so we choose a range partition strategy to two tables. The first is our uh, orders table, and then the second is our product order table. So let me introduce you the range partition strategy for our orders table, because we have over 3 million uh, distinctive orders. So we use order ID as our partition key, and we will partition them into five partitions. And we use uh, user ID, order ID, and user plus order ID as three indexes, because these table will later be merged with product order table to create uh, intuitive machine learning features. And for the second table is our product order table. We use product ID as our partition key, also range partition into five partitions. We choose product ID, order ID, and product order ID as our indexes. So uh, in our RDS, the database is named as InbaDB because Inba is our customer, is the name of our company. And then the schema we've created is named as Inba schema. And then let's come from the writer instance because with performance test, we've created our table. So let's go to the uh, recovery plan, the data replica. Uh, when we started this RDS service, we choose multi-AZ 
uh, deployment and we uh, choose the right and uh, read it, uh, separate strategy. That is, we have a read only um, instance. So I will introduce uh, my team member, Charles, to introduce you about the ETL part. And okay, before that, I would like to show you the data flow and some snippet of our uh, development environment. So you can see that our data flow, first it will come from our RDS raw data table and then it will went to the uh, silver data bucket. There, there will be store clean data and features for machine learning models. And then the third bucket would be store the output JSON, that is the machine learning output recommendations. And then we will also store our recommendations back to RDS. And in the right, you can see some Athena performance test snippets. For example, before that, we have tables that are not partitioned. And then later, we have tables that are partitioned and merged. We would test their uh, writing speed and their query efficiency. So Charles, it's your turn now. OK. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, this is Charles. And uh, I will introduce you guys about our ETL procedure. So the ETL procedure is a crucial step for our inbound recommendation project that involves extracting and uh, transforming our data from the RDS read-only uh, read replica and loading it into the S3 bucket as a server data. The ETL procedure uh, we do can be broken down into the following parts. Uh, first, so we established a connector to RDS uh, using JDBC, uh, which allowed uh, the glue to subsequently read data out of the RDS database through the connector. And then we use a uh, glue crawler, uh, which helps us automatically find the metadata information for calling and updating the data in the glue catalog. And in the catalog, uh, we process and manage uh, these five corresponding uh, transactional tables these include uh, IELTS, uh, department, product, orders, and other product. And next, we build uh, the glue's ETL procedure. And in this procedure, we build the glue job in IPython notebook to transform the information in five tables by constructing the more detailed and meaningful data features. Uh, we then stored the processed data in S3 bucket as a server data for subsequent uh, machine learning modeling. And uh, on top of this, uh, considering the accessibility and the security of that data, we created and configured our M role on our VPC environment with only the blue access and the S3 access to do the ETL work. And uh, some partitioning can also be set up in this uh, ETL procedure. So next, um, Sun Yang will tell you about uh, how to do the next step of uh, machine learning modeling after getting the ETL data from S3. Okay, uh, hi, I'm Sun Yang. Uh, I'm gonna talk about, about uh, data modeling. And in this part, uh, uh, Inba Lambda function will be triggered by S3 bucket uh, from latest uh, object, and uh, Lambda function will start SageMaker instance uh, in this part. And Amazon SageMaker uh, can do the data modeling uh, for some uh, machine learning part. And uh, the recommendations uh, will be stored as JSON in S3 bucket output data. A SageMaker lifecycle configuration can uh, predefine the automation of notebook. And another part is about a uh, closed data loop. SageMaker converts JSON recommendations into CSV and write back to RDS in the recommendation table. It's for marketing teams, uh, customer, personal uh, analysis. And the table is a uh, table in the recommendation. It includes a user ID, product ID, and recommendation cons. And next part is James part. Uh, thanks, Sonia. Yeah. Um, so now the J JSON file is stored in S3, uh, S3 bucket 
and, and the data contains the key value pairs uh, where the user ID is a key and a list of three product IDs will be the value. And now uh, end users may have different ways to trigger the recommendation process. Um, for example, when they log into the app uh, and then our post uh, post API will be called and the query header is the um, user ID. And then the Lambda function will be triggered when there's an incoming API call. It fetches the user ID from a CloudWatch log group, um, search for the latest JSON file from S3 bucket and read the file to get the recommended product IDs. And finally, the Lambda function returns the product ID back to the API gateway and received by the backend um, developer. Next page, please. Huh? Oh. Uh, so here we create a simple web page to simulate the process. So you can see we can enter the user ID and get top three recommended product IDs. Uh, for example, in the right image, user 2712 bought these products before and machine learning algorithm will calculate the estimate score, indicating how likely the user will buy the product again. And we take the um, top three products as our output. Uh, next page. So here, um, let's, let's look at our extensive branch. Um, it's for our uh, learning the um, CDC pr uh, process. And um, basically it's for, for business intelligence or um, data analysis use and no nothing to do with the main branch. Um, so it starts from the left. We use um, data migration service to implement the CDC process. The source endpoint will be the Aurora Writer instance. Um, in, in order to enable CDC, we need to um, change the settings in uh, um, PostgreSQL parameter group. And the target endpoint is another S3 bucket to store data in coming, uh, coming from DMS. Um, now, when we run a DNS uh, replication task uh, for the first time, it will load um, five entire tables in the database to S3 bucket in CSV format and all subsequent changes made from database will be recorded as the um, structure in the below image. It adds an additional column to indicate whether the operation is uh, insert, update, or delete. In, uh, then in AWS Glue, we first set up the crawler to crawl the table stored in S3 bucket when uh, DMS loads the entire table for the first time. And we can see all data are loaded in the data. A data catalog table by using Athena. Then every time the CDC file comes into the S3 bucket, the Lambda function will be triggered to run the glue job uh, so that we can generate the latest table by merging the old table and CDC file. Finally, the, the updated table will be stored back to um, data catalog table. By doing so, we can query tables from Athena directly or we can use Tableau to connect to um, Athena instead. Uh, so that, 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 that's the entire structure of our um, architecture. Next, Charlie will talk about what are our next steps for this project. Okay, thanks, James. Our next step is involved with our DevOps team members. So uh, together with them, we will formalize our VPC security setting and also we will migrate our uh, working flow from dev emv to prod emv this also includes the uh, formation of our naming because in previous slides we've shown you about the um, dev emv snippets so you can see that our naming is consists of imba as a star and then the uh, components for example glue SageMaker, lambda and at the second component and the last component will be our specification so for this naming form uh, formation we will also consult our devops team members so we can uh, streamline the whole pipeline and then the final step is to automate our whole uh, code and the deployment process so that's comes our FAQ uh, process. Ask any, ask us anything you want to know. 
please.